In today's video, I'll be covering how to use Power Query to combine files and also import data into Excel. It's very simple to do and requires no prior knowledge of how to use Power Query. To get started in our Excel file, we'll just want to navigate to the data tab of the ribbon and over and get and transform data. We can click get data and we could do it straight from Excel where we get data from text slash CSV, Excel workbook, or from a whole folder, but we can also just launch Power Query. So with Power Query launched, we will wanna get a new source of data. So we can do from file and we can get a few different files to combine from one folder. So once the file explorer is open and we have the folder we want to import files from, if we click on it, it won't show what files are in there. But if we pull up the same folder in the normal file explorer, it will show the different files. So we have three files here, sales data for January, February, and March. So now we can go back to our Power Query file explorer, and then we'll just click on the folder and click open. And so now we can see the different names of the files and we can hit combine and transform. And so now it will show up a window that says combine files. And if we click, it will just show us the first file in the folder that will combine the other two files too. So this is January and it will now combine February and March. We can click okay. And so now we are at a window where we can scroll down and see all the different columns and rows and also the source. So this is all from January's file, but if we keep scrolling down, there's also February's file and there's also some blank rows that I can show you how to get rid of and also marches. So it already combined all those files. So if we go to remove rows and remove blank rows, it will not get rid of these null columns because of this source name. So when we load this to Excel, we will not need this. So we can right click and it will come up with options, but we can click remove. So now if we go to remove rows, remove blank rows, now we move down to the end of February, we can see it now took out those null rows. Now the data looks good to import, so we can hit close and load to. And then on this Excel file, we can put it on a new worksheet or just the existing worksheet and click what cell we want it to be in. A1 is fine, we'll click okay. And now this table is loaded. So it now includes January, February, and March's sales data. So it is easiest when all the files are in one folder, so then you can just simply click Get Data and then From Folder. But we can launch the Power Query Editor, and I'll show you how to manually merge and append different files. But before we get into that, we should go over what's the difference between them. So using append in Power Query, will be just like what happened in the last example where the files got combined from one end to the other and they will combine to make one table. And so merging files or tables will be very similar, but instead of getting added from top to bottom to the first table or file, it will get added to the last column of the right and will combine those files or tables and create one larger table. For this first example, I'll go over how to merge two files or two tables. And here in Excel, we have sales data from January to March, but now with a added column of customer ID. And we also have a common column of customer ID in the customer table in a different file. So now we'll go into Power Query and merge them together to create one file in one table. Now in Power Query, we can add a new data source We'll go from file and they will both be Excel workbooks. So we can add sales overview and import it. It will show that table in that file. And we can also import the customer ID file, which will also import the customer ID table. So if we go back to the sales overview table, we can hit merge queries and merge them as a new table. 
So this will automatically select sales overview as the one to merge. You have to select the table in matching column. So they do need a matching column, which will be customer ID. And then we can click customer info as our other table and also click the customer ID. And the join in this scenario won't matter, but you can also do left outer, right outer, and it will also give you examples of what they mean. So we can just click OK. And so the merge one. Now if we go over, we can see that customer info is in here. And it just says table, which is the table that it combined. But we can also click and click OK on expand. And this will now show the different columns that are coming from the customer info table dot customer ID, which will also be that column. So this is good to import. So we'll hit close and load too. And we can just do a new worksheet for this. And so now this will be the same sales data table with the addition of the customer info, customer IDs. And we have two of those. We can simply delete one of them. So that's how to merge two different tables from two different files. And now if we go to data and launch Power Query, we can also add new sources from file, the same thing, where now we can just manually append two files. So this will be how to do it if they're not in the same folder, or if you just want to manually append two different files, two different tables from various worksheets. So that will be sheet one is the name of the sheet is the same is the name of the source. So that would be January and we'll also import February. So this one will be sheet one, two or sheet one up here as well. So that's also a reason to have a good naming convention for each sheet of these files. It'll make it much less confusing. But so now we want to merge sheet one to sheet one, two, representing January and February sales data. So if we go back to January, now we'll hit append, append queries as new. So these will be two tables that will get added into one single table. We'll do sheet one then sheet one, two for January and February. If we look at it now named append one, it has January and February's and also does have blank rows down here that we can now just click remove blank rows and it got rid of them. So now we can close and load two and we can add this to a new worksheet. Click OK. And this will only have data for January and February's sales. And that's all I had for you in this video. If you'd like to see other tutorials explaining Power Query further or other features that are included, let me know in the comments. And remember to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.